Only on 12 News on this True Crime Friday. There's a new DNA tool that's helping detectives solve cold cases. Cases they couldn't solve even five years ago before this new technology emerged. It is helping identify murder victims, some from as many as four decades ago and leading to answers. But as Team 12's Michael Doudna shows us, it's not without controversy, even if it helps solve more cases. So where do the victims fall in this? And I think they really kind of end up off by the wayside. How does a person disappear? We know she was roughly 60. We know she's a white female, and that's it. How does a case go cold? We don't know why she was there. We don't know um, why she's missing, why she was murdered. Who is this Jane Doe? Devil Dog Doe. Found off Devil Dog Road. She probably had um, a residence or lived within a community or, or a husband or a spouse. For the last 18 years, detectives Brian Tozer and Troy Short with the Coconino County Sheriff's Office have searched for those answers. First, using her DNA. So there, there, is a, there is a national database for DNA, but um, it's limited to a criminal database or an offender database. But what if your Jane Doe never committed a crime? And so they're not going to be in that database. And Devil Dog Doe wasn't. Without knowing who she is, where are you guys at? So that's why it's a cold case. See, state testing uses a database limited to only criminal suspects, leaving bodies found, but the victims still lost. But we have roughly like 20, 21 cases unidentified. In the almost two decades since detectives found Devil Dog Doe, DNA has exploded. Take home tests, providing private options, a bigger pool of DNA. It'll be the future of solving crimes. It's known as familial DNA. So we're trying to identify a cousin or a brother or a sister or a dad or a mom. It's hoping that family can provide that missing link. So that we can go back and track your DNA down and confirm who you are. For example, using a private lab, the Coconino County Sheriff's Office was able to identify Valentine Sally as Caroline Eaton, almost 40 years after her murder. Five years ago, when you hit that roadblock, you were dead. And detectives want to use this tool for the other missing lives to reignite cold cases. It is invaluable. But the problem is cold hard cash. But I think some of those are, are upwards of about eight or $10,000 and they can go beyond that. Now the state does do familial DNA tests, but only with its criminal database. And with no funding for private labs, detectives must pick and choose which case gets another chance. How do you prioritize human life? It's a really difficult thing to do, um, but unfortunately we have to do that and it's based on money. And familial DNA is not without controversy. Some states have banned its use over privacy concerns of potentially identifying suspects through an innocent relative's DNA. But there's also the victims. The families that people don't really see and they don't have to deal with. Right now, there are an estimated 40,000 unidentified bodies in the US. Each one had a life family. They call on his birthday every year. Who may be seeking closure. They grasp at straws because it is your family member. To know if their loved one may have already been found. And I can only imagine, you know, what they have to be going through, not knowing where that family member is or not being able to bring that suspect to, to justice. While officers in and around Arizona continue to try and identify their Jane and John Does, they're always looking for information and tips from the local community. Also, the FBI has a national database that you can check out right now at 12news.com. We're in Phoenix. Michael Downer, 12 News.